Hey everyone, this is part two of my uh, little talk uh, you got chats with you guys. Now, you guys remember last week when I mentioned the uh, several of the shootings like Virginia Tech, Sandy Hook, San Bernardino, and Columbine? Uh, well, there was one I kind of left out the University of Texas Clark Now, to provide context for that, a disgruntled U of T student climbed a clock tower with a sniper rifle and started taking pot shots at random passers by below. 58 people were probably presumed dead. The same amount of a. If you, uh, if you uh, want to get me uh, the actual number of those dead, uh, put it down in the comments and I'll. Uh, Admit that I was wrong. Yes, I own up to my mistakes. Deal with it. Anywho. Well, the police took way too damn long to get up there and try and stop me. So, SWAT was established well after that. And then, militarization of police happened. Giving them, giving them full auto assault rifles. Grenade launchers, armored trucks, and Christ knows what else. Oops. Now, some people are actually okay with this. Because, but, considering how many times BLM has tried to destroy cop cards and murder, co murder cops in cold blood, I think maybe, maybe just maybe, that the militarization leads to these sorts of things. It also doesn't help with the insane war on drugs, which needs to end, mind you, needs to be eliminated. Boom. Gone. Kaput. I mean, Jesus Christ, people. How far down the rabbit hole do you need to be before you realize that the govies the bureaucrats don't have your best interests at heart. These statists are probably the very same brain trust. Do I have to say it before it gets into your thick skulls? How government isn't your friend? Seriously, all this, all you people consume are movies, TV, and CNN, as probably Starbucks. And I'm saying this as somebody who likes Starbucks myself. I mean, God. your priorities in friggin' order in regards to who you should care for. Besides, people care for people. When Hurricane Harvey happened and those two Illinoisans then came to help, these people earned my full goddamn respect. And respect, my friend, and respect, there he goes. It is hard to earn in this day and age. What does it say about these airheads? That makes them think. No. It's what you people need to know, not think, no. Right. And, uh, crazy. From my, uh, from the, uh, 
no good deed goes unpunished, world. In the injustice uh, part of our little vlog chat, that's Adam, who's recently revealed as the first fighter in Fighter Pack 3. Now, the reasoning for this is simple. They wanted to cross-promote DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Oh. With the... Uh, uh, tomorrow. That and the new Hellboy movie, which you'll probably saw Ron Perlman, won't be on this, is probably in filming. Of course, this is from History Behind the Warrior. But... I've also been hearing a bit of talk about how Pennywise is going to be the uh, guest character in Mortal Kombat 11. This, of course, coincides with It Chapter 2, which is dropping on June 2019. The very same year that MK11 will presumably come out. I, for one, say bring it on. Mainly because we can never have too much of horror. I mean, we already had Freddy, Jason, the alien, the predator, and Leatherface. And I know, for all you alien purists out there, it's called the Xenomorph. So sue me. Anyways. In... In other riveting news... In Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite news, the uh, three DLC characters are indeed revealed. They are Sigma, Black Panther, and Monster Hunter. Now, Monster Hunter plays similar to that of a stance character. What I mean by that is that, that, that she has three different weapons. A pair of swords, and the golem blade, and of course, a giant bow. Now, I, for one, find that kind of inventive. That, apparently somebody did their homework on her. Their homework on her. Considering that her armor has been ganked from a Rathalos. Or, if you're doing the Player 2 thing, a Azure Rathalos. Now, Sigma, Sigma's a bit interesting. Considering that his Marvel rival, the genocidal machine Ultron, is already a playable character. But he plays pretty much like you would expect. Except he doesn't have his friggin' scythe from X4. Which kinda sucks. But eh, uh, you know he's trying to lose both milk, I suppose. Last but not least, the King of Wakanda, Black Panther. Now, Panther's newest uh, adventure in the big screen coming next year shows some potential. All it needs is Storm, and or any other egg geeks, I mean, for that matter. And the game will be next to perfect. But nope, nope, we can't have nice things. So Marvel, Fox, on on behalf of every comic book fan from here to Brit, here to London, do me and the entirety of the human race a favor, and bury the hatchet, and let the X Men be a part of your little movement. They're not your property. Same goes for the Fantastic Four. And to all the people who still screech on about how the game is doomed to fail, you people don't know me or Josh or anyone. That's like saying, that's like wanting the pilot of a plane that you're flying in to crash into something. I mean, sure, the game does have its low points. I mean, it's <laughs> Chris working alone. <laughs> but other than that, a few other cringy moments. These cats know, still know how to weave us. The cats over at Marvel, as cucked as they are, are, still know how to weave a good story. Now, please, do us all a favor, give your haters, and go back to Mommy's basement, crying over how you lost 
plus the argument on how bad Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite will be. Thank you. Now, uh, this is a, this next one's a bit close to home because I'm an animal lover. Now, Monday Matt's uh, cat, uh, Chance, has just gone through a bit of a surgery. So, um, if you want to go to his channel and, uh, donate, donate go fund me to pay for the bills, the medical bills, or to his Patreon or anything else. Now, don't get the wrong idea. I'm not shilling him. I'm not shilling him at all. Not even close. Instead, I'm asking I'm asking you for your help. Help him um, to make sure that man's cat is happy and healthy again. I have a pet dog myself, a Wheaton Terrier. If you've seen my uh, live stream with Shane and the guys, uh, you might have heard it bark a few times. Oops. Oops. But, please. With the, the adpocalypse and a kid on the way, Matt's going to need all the help you guys can get. So if you can do that, and uh, just tell him that Johnny sent you, that'd be great. Thanks. Now then, from our college division, apparently, free speech week in the, in the, uh, in the University of California Berkeley campus was an epic frickin' flop, especially with all the autistic screeching going on in and around that area, which quite saddens me because Berkeley at one point was a beacon of free speech. And see it twisted and bastardized into a into a shell of its former self. It goddamn sickens me to my very core. Now, Milo, of course, is the cat who uh, left Breitbart because of a non-scandal involving pedophilia, probably conjured by the uh, old guard to try. And try and decredit him. He's credited, of course, sap. Poor British sap. And the fact that he got married to a black dude. I'm actually kind of happy. And this uh, segues quite nicely into what I think about gay marriage at the moment. Now, what you do in your bedroom is none of my damn business. If you're gay, straight, bisexual, or whatever. Whatever. That's cool. I, mean, I don't care if you're a spurg, a normal, or an attack helicopter. I'm sorry, once you, or once you go full autist, you and you and me are freaking cool. Uh, as you all can uh, see, the leaves are uh, changing here, so. Uh, makes for quite a beautiful sight here in this uh, rather nippy fall afternoon of October the 10th, 2017. On this John Talks, the show that makes you want to either sleep, sleep, or enjoy some popcorn. Now, I think we got a lot accomplished today. We, uh, I uh, talked about movies, sports, social justice, and many other stuff. I, uh, it's like the piss out of a few SJWs and liberal morons. And I, uh, managed to help, and I managed to shill out something, something to Matt. Oh, did I say shill? I meant help Matt out. Yeah, great Freudian slip, John. Anyways, uh, I'll see you guys when I get home, and, uh, John Peterson telling you that the war for sanity is a never-ending battle.